I tracked Carla Mulca down after she had moved to, she left Canada, she disappeared for five years. She was in Guadeloupe. I found her in Guadeloupe. And what did I find? A slender, older, still attractive, Carla Homolka, married to her, her lawyer's brother, and uh, raising three biological children of her own. That's hard for people to, to take. Legally, there's nothing wrong with it. There were no conditions imposed on her release from prison. She's entitled to do whatever she wants. But ethically, morally, in the sense of karma and faith, many people have a hard time uh, dealing with the fact that she's got these three young, beautiful children. And she took, she killed, she tortured three young children that belonged to other parents. I spent an hour with Carla Homolka in her living room in Guadeloupe as the only journalist to have a face-to-face -face interview with her. And she was very wary, obviously, because at first she thought, I think, that I'd come to kill her because she knew Pope would want to kill her. She knows that very well. And since no one had ever found her before, it was, you must be an assassin. I didn't even think about that. I just thought, Carla, you know, you must have a side to the story. So she took me into the living room. She closed the French doors. How frightened was I then? I'd already decided that this was a frightening thing to do, but you, as a journalist, you get afraid before. You, you imagine what is it like to cover a war and how risky is it, and the people who do the phenomenal job of going there and, and getting killed sometimes, unfortunately. They know the danger. They put themselves into it. So you're not really panicked at the time. You feel like you're experiencing the danger that you prepared yourself for. She was very well put together. Uh, and she sat right at the end of the couch, and I sat at the other. She had three small children who she constantly was bringing to her breast. At one point, she actually pulled her top down so that most of her breast was exposed and nursed her, I think, one-year-old uh, toddler. And it was... It was so odd because I was trying to pretend that I wasn't sitting across from Carla Homolka, a psychopath, in, from what I saw, my estimation. And I'm not a psychiatrist, so it's probably worth nothing. But I feel so strongly after what I experienced. So she, all the kids were calling on her, and she was doing this. And, and, and so we were in this, I was in a state of pretending like nothing was happening. So I was trying to keep my eyes up, knowing full well that this was a very obviously overly sexualized move in front of a stranger, particularly one with her past. And she remained very calm, dead calm. She was super on guard because she didn't want anyone to know uh, where she lived, but she wanted to know two things. She wanted to know how I found her, really, like exactly how I found her, like where had she made a misstep. And she wanted to talk. And that was the weirdest thing ever. Even though we were locked in this combative situation, she was at one end, I was at the other end of this couch. Not a huge couch, but still, clearly, we were both pressed against either end. There were many times in that conversation, just because of all the experience I have as a journalist, where I thought, that's it, we're, I'm gone. I can, just, I can just see her moving toward it. She would move toward it, she'd stop. She'd come back. It was like she was playing a cat and mouse with me. And so I went along with it because I wanted to say, obviously, as long as possible. At one point, she left the room, and she left me with her children. The little boy, who's just barely walking, teetered up to me and put his hands on my knees because he want, you know, wanted to play. And she was standing up at, sort of out of my eye, and I said, look, I, I'm a safe person to have here. And, you know, it's, I'm, I'm good to talk to. I, I, you know, I'm, not, I'm not touching your child at all. And she turns around, and she looks at me with like a just dagger, and she said, you better not touch my children because you don't know how fast you'll be out of here. At which point you might wonder, hello? You know, I guess you know how scary it can be to leave your children with a stranger, right? Nothing. Not any acknowledgement that that's what she did to somebody else's kids. It's like, it's, it's the oddest thing. She's clearly there. She's clearly in control of her husband. At one point, he was asking, what should I do? And she rolled her eyes at me. Like, you know how husbands, not that I would ever do that. But she rolled her eyes trying to bond with me by putting her husband down. 
it was a it was a tremendously odd experience. 